Good morning, body of Christ. God bless you. Keep me in prayer. Kind of a little under the weather, but I always look at everything as best I can in the spiritual insight, right? Because I was able to be home. But I wanted to share just something as I'm having my time with God. I was watching this movie last night it's in, in Job 32. Was, was standing out, so I read it this morning. I want us to understand something, and it goes with what I'm reading, but it also goes with a cup of coffee that I had just made a little while ago. It says, in Hebrews and Psalms, it says, what is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you visit him? In Job, 34 in verse 14 and 15 it says if he should set his heart on it if he should gather to himself his spirit and his breath all flesh would perish together and man would return to the dust now job in job 32 32, 33, 34, so far, Elihu, which is a younger man, is bringing correction to Job and his three friends for their words towards Job, the three friends towards Job, but Job's words toward God. And as I was reading this, what came to me was, we as men and women of the faith, our righteousness, our good deeds, everything that we do could never ever be worthy enough in the presence of God. It's the glory of his son in us receiving him as our Lord and Savior and then giving our life to, them, to him to let Jesus live through us. So... It's now Jesus working his life through us if we're submissive and following the word of God and being really mindful of being led by the Holy Spirit. And I wrote this down because I went to read um, Psalms 104 because it was a cross reference to verse um, 14 in Job 34. And the whole Psalm was about God's created being, what he has done, how the waters can go from one over one part of the earth and how it waters the whole earth and God's omnipotence, omnipresence. And it really had me think, I am not even worthy enough to be in the presence of God to, to get on my knees and, and pray to a God that is way bigger, way greater than what I can even fathom in my mind and how I am nothing before him, but that his love for me, for you, has made it so great. And I was just writing this down because I was really feeling like we complain, we murmur, we go through life's trials and tribulations trying to figure everything out and then sometimes even lash out at God when God himself is like, there's no wickedness in him, there's no iniquity in him, there's no unrighteousness in him, but we fail to really understand that when we come and ask him, why is this happening? Why is that happening? Instead of us saying, God, thank you that you're allowing me to go through this. Thank you that I'm supposed to be learning from this. Thank you that I'm even alive and breath in my lungs, even through the achiness of my body, but that I'm still in your will that I'm still on this earth, that you are still working in me and through me and coming to a different reverence for him. And that's what I felt this morning and it just really got to me and I wrote this down. God's grace is omnipotent. 
His mercy and loving kindness is too great for me to even comprehend. There is no evil in him, nor can man find or ever justify any wickedness in him. In him is the light of all men, and that's Jesus Christ. And as I was sitting there thinking that, it was like I was making some coffee, and the coffee wasn't warm enough because I tasted it, and lukewarm hit me really strong. And, he, and this came to my spirit. How many of us are lukewarm thinking we are hot? And that hit me because I was sitting with God. I'm saying, am I really, really proclaiming Christ in my life? Am I really being submissive to his will? Am I more worried about what God can do for me instead of what God can do through me? Am I more concerned about what God wants me to do in this world or am I more concerned about my relationship with him? I mean, when I started to really grab hold of this, it's about us examining ourselves. Are we really hungering for God? Are we really trying to get into his grace and his mercy and really take that apart? I did a study years ago on grace and mercy that made me weep. When I read the book of John chapter 1, years, years ago, it made me weep. And there was this oneness between me and God. And as we grow up in the word and years and years go by, as we get older and mature, I believe sometimes we tend to pull away from the, the, the desire of a child to a father. And God, I don't believe God just, God is here to do all these good works that he's doing through us, but more for that relationship and that intimacy. When God used to come down and visit Adam, it said he used to come visit him in the cool of the night. I mean, just grab a hold of that God came down from eternities beyond to have interaction with his creation that he created and that intimacy and that love and that relationship that God had with Adam. And when Adam severed that relationship, imagine how that felt to God. I mean, when we see our children doing wrong or going astray, the pain and the sorrow and then when we're trying to have that relationship with them or them with us, it's severed. And I think when God came through Jesus and came and said, I, I, I truly want this relationship back with my children. I truly want it. I'm going to visit them in the flesh by becoming flesh. I mean, I, I just, it's like I feel like I was homesick to really realize this love that God has for me, this love that God has for you. I mean, it's greater than I can even imagine. I mean, it's tearing up my eyes now just thinking that I could never do enough or be enough to have that, that union with him, but he loves me enough. I mean, just to say, I'm gonna I'm keep you home sick just so I can spend time with you. I'm going to keep you home so I can give you a better understanding of who I am in your life and how much I love you. And I'm going to draw you to me because I'm because the Bible says if we draw near to God, God will draw near to us. And I believe that that's what he's wanted from his children this year. I'm believing that he wants and desires this relationship with us that's more bigger than we truly understand, brothers and sisters. And I just wanted to take this time out because I feel like someone needs to understand that. It's not by your good works, your sins and all this stuff that you're doing and you're fighting the sin and you're trying to stay right and you're running to the church and you're in prayer and you're on your knees and you're crying out to God and God is saying, but I love you. Just it just understand that I, I love you and, and what you're doing to hurt and harm yourself hurts and harms God. 
But God wants that intimacy. I mean, think about it. What is man? Not who is man. What is man that God is so mindful of him that God's mind stays on each and every one of us at the same time that he's yearning for that intimate relationship from his sons and his daughters. That's what we're going to have when we get to heaven. But God wants that now on earth as it is in heaven. In, in Psalms um, 139, how David is really coming into this union with God and he's telling God to, to just deal with him, right? And so I just think that as I get back into my word this morning and spend more time with him, that's what he wanted. He's like, Ronnie, I want to spend more time with you, not just in the word, but as I'm reading and studying, it's like he's stopping me and he's talking to me and I'm hearing him and he's letting me know, I want more of you for me. I understand the needs that you have. I understand the wants that you have. I even understand some of the desires you have because I place some of those desires in you but other desires you have may not be the desires of the Father. And that's the, the reason for the oneness between you and Him. So I just like to pray that this morning at, or today that at some point you just stop everything and just come into the presence of the Lord and just be mindful of Him in a way that He wants to speak with you and share with you because I mean I was really under the weather yesterday when I came home from work and I got up this morning and I just it was I'm like what I mean I was trying to pray and it was like I don't even have that in me to pray right now Lord but I came to the kitchen made a cup of coffee I want my second cup because I'm just like really engulfed in this place with him and I feel like that that's what he wants with all of his children Ever since this year started, it's like I'm in this place with God to get a better understanding of me and God. But I think it's more of a, where he wants not me to just have the relationship, but the intimacy of his heartbeat, of understanding his love, understanding that where I'm at in my life right now, employment, relationship, family, it's about him being engulfed in my life where there's this oneness, this intimacy, this God, it's even to what he's showing me is I can't even put in words. I believe that's what he's wanted from not just me, but from his children. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for allowing me to be transparent and humble between me, you, and your sons and your daughters listen to this message. May they hunger and strive and depend and lean completely on you through the Holy Spirit to have a deeper and more compassionate relationship with you and your son. May they embrace you for your word says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. So I will no longer keep this message going that I may be able to draw more into you this morning, Lord, and allow your spirit, your presence, your holiness, your godliness, your righteousness to transform me, to cleanse me, and to restore the brokenness of my relationship with you that it will be severed no more. May you continue to do that with your sons and daughters this morning. May they be hungry and understand that it, they have no righteousness as I have no righteousness that will ever, ever be righteous enough to be in your presence. But your son's death on that cross and our embracing him as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the hope of glory that resides in us, Lord, that that is what we will be remembered by and take it to our heart when we come to you, realizing that it's an honor, it's a gift to be able to come to the one and only true God, Yahweh, 
and have an intimate relationship with our creator in a way like never before. And I give you, Lord Jesus, Father God, and Holy Spirit, all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Have a very blessed morning.